What's good, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Today, I am trying my best to contain my excitement for Ice Rider Calyrex VMAX. The Ice Rider is one of my favorite cards to pick up and play. Uh, its math has been a little so-so. It was just kind of the one from Chilling Rains that I gravitated towards. Bellany, you know, kind of swung my way. It looked a little bit like Welder. I'm like, okay, I've, you know, this is my kind of card. Uh, but with Astral Radiance, it's actually a top tier contender that you should be at least considering. And there are a couple different ways to play it. It's not quite a one trick pony. So why Ice Rider? So I'm revisiting it because it has a beautiful uh, alternate art from the Trainer's Gallery in Astral Radiance. But there are some things you need to know. It's an efficient attacker. Everything is two energy. So first attack caps out at 160 damage. So it does 10 plus 30 for each of your opponent's bench. Full bench. Uh, 160 for two energy. Awesome. You take through those one prizers rather easily. Max Lance, two water energy. 10 plus 120 for each energy you discard. So that's 250. Awesome. 250, 160, two energy. Those are really solid attacks. Like, you cannot ask for much better. That is really, really good. But why you need to consider it now in Astral Radiance more than Brilliant Stars? It hits relevant numbers. So before we had choice belt, okay, so Max Lance caps 280, Ride of the High King is 190. Okay, cool, cool. So we're hitting Pokemon V really, really well. Like, we're in a great game. Pokemon V stars are screwed. Uh, you know, we're kind of doing that. But Mew V Max has been king for a very long time. And we were kind of a little, you know, a little shy. But I'm telling you, Astral Radiance gets us there now. Uh, Radiant Halucha. Says Sparkling Halucha on the screen, I know. As long as this Pokemon's on your bench, your Pokemon do 30 more damage to Pokemon V Max. So now we're doing 220 with Ride of the High King if it's a Pokemon V Max, but like why? Uh, or you're doing 310 with Max Lance. So 310 is a much more relevant number. If they don't play Oracorio and Mew, that's a knockout on Mew. Uh, that's 10 left damage on most Pokemon with 320 health, or 20 Pokemon left with 330 health. Huge numbers. Halucha changes the game big time. You add in a Leon if you want to get a little greedy, and you're hitting 340. So now you can Oko anything in the game for two energy. Like, it is a knockout. It is a hard hitter now, and you need to be aware of it. So this is the big one. This is the hype. This is for the budget guys. This is for anybody who's like, oh, I want this card, or I want to get something. There are going to to be many, many ways to get your hands on it and many of the pieces that it really wants to play with that are a little inflated. There's a stage three or level three league battle deck coming. You're getting three of the V and three of the V max. And there has been a list, a list leaked to include some sort of Inteleon engine. I'm not sure if they would include the chilling rain engine and just give you access to the keep callings and the quick shootings. But more than likely, if they're going to do Stage 3, it looks like we're getting a good Shady Dealings line in the box to go with our 3-3 Ice Rider. So you're getting everything out of the box that you need with this. If I'm wrong, please let me know in the comments, but I cannot contain my excitement for this. And it's not it's just around the corner, June 2022. Like, Ice Rider is going to be easily accessible, dirt cheap, and a good deck. What more could one ask for? like this this is not just a one trick pony and it's an accessible pony so let's take a look at what's going on so bag of tricks we have tons to work with currently we have melanie the card that makes it work you know attach water and energy from your discard pile to one of your pokemon v if you draw if you do draw three cards love 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 this card uh suicune v so for two energy it does 20 and 20 more for each bench pokemon to play both yours and your opponents so that's 220 on a basic that's a nice utility Pokemon to attack with if you don't have your uh, VMAX set up right away. You know, pretty good. We have Arceus V-Star. Yes, it does play with possibly the best V-Star Pokemon in the game. So you have a 3 prizer and a 2 prizer in the same deck. And both are valid attackers. Star Birth will get you pieces that you need. And of course, my excitement and my favorite way to play Ice Rider is through the Inteleon engine. And with the Inteleon engine rumored to be coming through in that box next month, you know, again, if I'm wrong, I'm apologizing, but I can't contain my excitement. You can hunt down any puzzle piece you need. If you need capacious buckets, if you need Melanie's, if you need quick balls, if you need boss's orders, if you need anything, the Inteleon engine will get it for you. And with a couple Raihan, Aqua Bullet is a valid attack for the Inteleon. So you can clean up, you can get greedy, you can play the deck how you want because the Inteleon engine 
throws itself at flexibility and you can do what you need. But doesn't just end there with the existing card pool. No, 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 no. Look at Astral Radiance. We've got some good stuff coming. Temple of Sinnoh. So this card is relevant against anything with special energy. So the big decks, single strike, rapid strike, fusion strike. Single strike uh, makes everything colorless. You know, they can bump it with their tower of darkness, whatever. Not so much for them. I haven't really seen much of them. Uh, rapid strike, resurgence in play. You know, that rapid strike energy is brutal. It, 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 you know, that rapid flow out of nowheres, it's just nasty. And shutting that off for a turn and forcing a stadium bump. Some decks will have it, some decks won't. That's enough of a disruption right there. But the biggest reason that I'm highlighting it here is because it's a math fixer. Against Fusion Strike, aka MUV Max, their energy prevent you from doing damage with quick shooting Inteleons because it says prevent all effects of abilities on those Pokemon. Temple of Sinnoh wipes away that effect. So now you can quick shooting. They play Oracorio in their Mudex. They play it down. So Choice Belt, Max Lance, Halucha's 310. Oracorio drops it to 290. So they survive by 20 and then they Psychic Leap back into the deck. Uh-uh. Temple of Sinnoh. We shut off the uh, the Fusion Strike energy so we can ping them with the, the quick shooting Inteleon. So Max Lance, Choice Belt, Halucha, 310. Then we throw the, the uh, Inteleon quick shooting ping, 330. We are getting through the Mu V Max. We are trading with arguably one of the best or the best deck in format, depending on who you ask. Temple of Sinnoh is a math fixer. It is a great card. Then Spar uh, Radiant Halucha, so Sparkling Halucha. So it says, if this Pokemon's on your bench, your Pokemon's attacks do 30 more to active VMAX. This is the math fixer. This puts Ice Rider on the map. This should be your first or second inclusion when you're looking at Radiant Pokemon. There is one more contender to look at, but like this is the big swing number. This is the one that makes the horsey go. Roxanne. So reset stamp for those of you who don't know. This is if your opponent has three or fewer prize cards remaining, both players shuffle their hands in. The player who played the card draws six. Your opponent draws two. So we have Path to the Peak to shut off abilities for rule box Pokemon and Roxanne. So look at that Inteleon on board. Shady Dealings can grab two trainers. Grab your Path. Grab your Roxanne. You slap down that Path. You play your Roxanne. You take a big KO with Max Lance. And then you're handing your opponent off a three card hand and saying, can you respond to my big monster can you deal with giant frozen horse and sometimes they can sometimes they can't but roxanne makes it much harder to answer and of course the other radiant uh pokemon in the in the game that'll be fighting for spots in ice rider decks sparkling greninja plays well into melanie you know it just kind of uh has some synergy there so once during your turn you can discard an energy card it'll be a water energy and draw two cards so discard a water energy, draw two. Melanie, attach a water energy from your discard, draw three. Between the two of them, you're getting five energy or five cards and an energy on board. Awesome. You know, a bit of extra consistency if you're not really looking at the damage output. Sparkling Greninja is your guy. Just one thing to note is the Radiant Pokemon will have their ability shut off if you play Path to the Peak. Make sure Path to the Peak is the last thing you do. Don't start your turn with it because you will shut yourself out of the game. Shuts out Arceus, shuts out Greninja, shuts out Halucha. Anyway, good there. And then if you ever get it set up, which is a little difficult, but it's an option, Moonlight Shuriken. So discard two energy and it does 90 to two of your opponent's Pokemon. So it is a one prize version of G-Max Rapid Flow. Urshifu is killing it right now. And to have that on a one prizer that you can hypothetically set up, that is big. That is big. If you can set it up, you can swing games. You can take out Drizzles, you can finish off VMAXs, you can finish off things, you can take things down. It can come out of nowhere if you need it. Big fan. And of course, the scary monster we covered last, Origin Palky of V-Star. You know what Suicune does? Suicune is, uh, Suicune is a monster. Palkia is Suicune on steroids because it hits harder for essentially the same water, you know, attack, 60 base damage and 20 for every bench Pokemon in play. But it also has the ability of Star Portal. So you can accelerate three water energy to your board any way you like from your discard pile. So you can play into the Greninja, you can set up a Max Lance out of nowhere, you can just go full send, like Star Portal gives the deck some flexibility. That's why I'm saying it's not just a one trick pony anymore. You have options coming out of Astral Radiance. So recap, left is what we have, right is what we're getting in Astral Radiance. Big fan. And then let's jump into the lists. You want to start playing Brilliant uh, Ice Rider and Brilliant Stars because there's about two, three more weeks left on PTCGO before we get the cards. 
jump in with Jonathan Patricio's list. Um, he's been performing well on Limitless. If I botched your name, I am very sorry. But this list has been winning. He's been doing well. I'm going to leave a link in the description to show you, you know, copy the, the list, check it out, see how he's been faring. 4-3 Ice Rider, standard stuff, you know, main attacker. 4 Sobble, 4 Drizzile, the Inteleons, you know, 2 Quick Shooting, 1 Shady Dealing, Crobat for some digs, Suicune is an alternate attacker, your Marnies, your Bosses, your Melanie, standard stuff, 1 Raihan, 1 Leon, so you're going with your damage mods because there's no Halucha, Raihan just gives you an attacker, you know, set up with the Suicune, set up, set up with the Ice Rider, you know, that kind of thing, it just keeps the deck going, 4-3, Two Capacious Bucket, two Ultra Ball, more Discard, two Evolution Incense, Scoop Up Net for Movement, two Belts, one Air Balloon, three Path of the Peak. List is pretty standard at this point. The deck wins. The deck does well. It is a good deck. Uh, but next up, we're going to jump into the stuff for Astral Radiance that you might have to look a little forward down the line to. First one up is Ice Rider Palkia. So Ice Rider is our bad boy, our face of the deck. Primary attacker. Palkia is mostly our backup. And our utility V-Star, because we do not have a V-Star power without Palkia. So, we got the 4-3, 2, you know, saw Inteleon engine, some consistency, smooth things over. 3-3 three, three Ice Rider, 2-2 two, two Palkia, Sparkling Greninja in this list. Again, we're trying to keep things cons consistent, and by uh, playing Greninja over, say, Halucha, we can play into the uh, Palkia's V-Star power into the Greninja to give us the snipe, so the 30 damage on Halucha in this case isn't needed. Whereas the Greninja, we can possibly steal two targets at once. Banafee for the bench protection. Jolteon is coming for Palkia. You gotta watch out. Rap Trigger, Shfu's still doing good. Don't want to give anybody any free prizes if we can help it. Three Melanie, two Boss, two Research, one Roxanne. I'm telling you, you might not need more than one. One Raihan, might not need more than one. Uh, if you feel like you play a little more, I love Raihan. It's a comeback card. Roxanne is a comeback card. I like having options in the late game. If I start slow, I want to be able to come back. I want to be able to get back in the game. And then we're going max consistency here. Four Evo, four level, four quick, two buckets. We want Inteleon searches. Uh, two belts, because we want our damage. Two nets for movement. Echoing horn. Oh, I just love bringing stuff back and taking it out again. Uh, whether it's Palkia, whether it's Ice Rider, whether it's the Greninja. Just, just putting something on the bench that they don't expect. Take it out. You know, work through it. Again, if you're dealing with something like if a V Max is difficult to deal with and there's a V in their discard pile, work smarter, not harder. Uh, Pal Pad just to reuse supporters. So if we want a third or fourth boss, or we want more Melanies than three, or if we want a second copy of Roxanne, or a second copy of Raihan, like the Pal Pad is there. Uh, Escape Rope is just some movement. Path to the Peak is mostly there for the Roxanne. So Shady Dealings and Teleon, grab the Roxanne, grab the Path, slap it down, take a big KO, and be like, oh, well, uh, I feel for you. And then, of course, Temple of Sinnoh is if Mew kind of rears its ugly head with all the dark support coming, we are still going to work through it. We are always going to work through it. We are also going to disrupt their energy. Um, and then, of course, 7 energy. We're playing 7 energy instead of 8 because we're playing 2 buckets. So just keep that in mind. Next up, we got another one. We got Arceus and Tele our Ice Rider. So I've been seeing this one make the rounds. So it's still doing well in Brilliant Stars. We kind of tweak some counts, kind of work some stuff here. I leaned more towards the Arceus V start, so if we ever have to go second, I want it max copies of the V, and I want it max copies of the double turbo. So double turbo is just there for the Trinity charge, so we can search for three water energy and put them on our Pokemon in any way we like. We got Industrious Incisors to top up our hand to draw until we have five. We've got the Ice Rider, you know, standard, kind of like alternating between. You might have one Arceus V in play, two Ice Riders, try to feed them like an Ice Rider, an Arceus, and an Ice Rider, or, you know, try to feed them an eight prize game so they can have they can have a big Ice Rider, they can have the Arceus, and then go three and three, and just make them work there. Um, Sparkling Greninja, again, we're just trying to smooth our hands over and feed into it and discard, and we play the Training Corp because we need a bump for Starbirth. So getting a chance to reuse our energy and then splash, splash it down. It's not really as live of an attacker, but it's there. Luminion, just to hunt things down because we're not playing the Italian engine. So if we want the Avery on call, we want the Raihan on call, we want the Roxanne, slap it down onto your bench, search your deck for a supporter, you know, and then you can play it. Situational, lets us get a little greedy with our accounts. Of course, we're playing the Pal Pad again because you never know which supporter you want to see twice in a game. Might want to see two Averys, tick somebody off, clear out their bench. Second copy of Roxanne because the first one, for the love of God, didn't stick. Happens. You got to be ready for that. Or, you know, Raihan just set something else up. 
you know, you got to search out those double turbos. You got to keep the game going, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, one path. Please do not play the path until your end of your turn. I'm going to say that every time a deck comes up with Path of the Peak in it. Don't play it until the last action of your turn. Because it's going to hurt you. Okay. So, yeah, this is Arceus uh, Ice Rider. Pretty standard stuff. Good time. And then, of course, this is my ambitious one. Let's go. So, we have Sylveon Arceus Ice Rider box. So, this is a morphed up Sylveon box. Um, there were some ones doing well, and I've been trying to experiment with Sylveon, and this one's kind of more out there. But basically, we are trying to take advantage of math and multi-attackers and uh, using some more flexible cards. So Crobat's in there, mostly to draw. The VMAX is there as an option for an attacker, but most likely it'll be a deterrent to keep them from picking off our Crobat Vs. Ice Rider, again, we know the business. 250, 280, 310, you know, Belt and Halucha 310. Hits harder than Sylveon ever could. Hits harder than Ice Rider or Arceus could ever. Uh, Star Birth, the V-Star Power. Um, that is just the consistency boost the deck needs. Uh, you're bricking, you're slow starting. Star Birth, you know, grab the pieces you need. We're, we're smoothing things out. We're off and rolling. Sylveon for Max Harmony is 70 plus 30 for each different color Pokemon. That's why you're seeing a small little rainbow going on here. So two Sylveon, two Ice Rider. Two Arceus, um, the Crobats are just extra draws because I always prize one. If I'm looking for a support Pokemon, I play one, I usually surprise, uh, yeah, prize it. Ditto lets us grab a V Pokemon from the discard pile and swap places with it. So say we discard Metacham, we're going to get greedy and we're going to go for some Yoga Loop plays here. I figured it's worth trying now that uh, Ice Rider fixes some math with Halucha. So Yoga Loop, put two prizes, two damage counters on something. If you knock it out, take an extra turn. It'll come up every once in a while. Usually you're discarding it, but that's what the Ditto's for. Ditto gives us a chance to use it if we need it. If we don't need it, it's, it's easy fodder. Rapid Strike Urshifu, because the card is just good. The card is well designed. Gale Thrust, 150 if it's switched in for one energy. Or G-Max Rapid Flow, which is just, what, a Melanie and a Rapid Strike energy. Uh, two 120 pings. You can take advantage of that beautiful fighting type. Um, it's, just, it's just a great card. And then... We're going for Melanie because it's our main, you know, boss, Marnie, Roxanne at this point. Like, those are pretty standard stuff. It's just what you're working with. And then we're going for Quick Ball, three Battle VIP Pass. So on your first turn, it lets you search for two Pokemon. End of the game, rest of the game, we're discarding them with Quick Balls and the Ultra Balls. Um, two Choice Belts, Evolution Incense, just to kind of get that free RCSV Star. Second turn, uh, Switches, a Capacious Bucket, an Energy Search in case we need a Dark Energy, not just a Water. You can switch it as a second bucket if you really want. Uh, Path to the Peak, again, for the Roxanne play. I'm telling you, like, you might even hold your Star Birth if you set up well enough with this deck. So you hold your Star Birth, and then late in the game, you flip it. Roxanne Path. There you go. Tower of Water, Stadium Bump, Sylveon retreats with it. Urshifu retreats with it. Metacham retreats with it. Not too bad. Uh, and then the energy count's a little messy, but I know. Rapid energy and double turbo work on Metacham. Uh, double turbo works on Arceus and Sylveon, and the double turbo and the rapid work on Sylveon as well. So everything has purpose. It's more of a toolbox deck. Uh, I heed a little bit of caution, but again, I will be playing this one, and if I can get my hands on the pieces, you will definitely see some games with this one, because I was excited to try it out um, for you. And then, of course, this is the tried and true. This is probably the one that uh, if I could bet my money on and go with out the gate, it's sweet, it's simple. Um, you're working your plan, you know, they're, they're, it's very easy to figure out what's going on here. We're playing our Ice Rider as our main attacker. We've got Inteleon as a backup in, and Search. Metacham for those greedy Yoga Loop turns. I think now uh, Ice Rider is going to set you up for a lot of Yoga Loop turns, so I am at least trying it. Um, in the initial stages of the format, Yoga Loop, uh, take an extra prize. You could swing back so you don't mind being a three prize body. Halucha, we know. Four counts of Melanie, it's the supporter we want to see most turns because we're just, we're punching through everything we see. 280, 310, 250, most things are not getting out of our way. So, uh, two bosses orders, two Marnie, a Research, a Raihan, a Roxanne. Again, those are just utility supporters we can search out as we need them with the Shady Dealing. Pal Pad, because Pal Pad is just going to be so good. There's a lot of supporters you want to play, but you don't want to play thick counts of them. So Pal Pad lets us kind of pick and choose. Oh, maybe I want two Raihans this game. Maybe I want two Roxanne's this game. Depending on what you want, Pal Pad is there for you. Um, four level, four quick ball, two buckets, two belts. Standard stuff here. Like, we're just going max consistency. Um, 
two evolution incense, two ultra ball. Sometimes you start a little slow and like that happens. So I put the ultra balls in here instead of like a higher incense count because I want to have six outs to my ice rider. You want to have two ice rider V turn one. And that way your opponent can't just isolate that one and try to boss it up, take it out early. Uh, escape ropes and nets are our movement. Echoing horn, you can find something to cut to make room for the echoing horn. Say you don't want to rock sand path them. Second echoing horn, maybe a third boss or an eighth water energy or a second, or yeah, or a second pow pad or anything like that. Um, right now I'm just trying to uh, have a, I'm trying to have my cake and eat it too. Uh, I've been playing this, I know, uh, PGCG Live is basically dead, but I've been playing this one minus the Halucha and the Roxanne and the Temple of Sinnoh for what feels like three months almost. It's the one where I'll crack out, open, play some games, you know, you know, really have some fun with this one. So this is one that I've really, really enjoyed, and this is the one that you'd probably see me, if you ever saw me in person, this is probably the one I would start with, because I know, I know what I'm doing with this one, but like this one is probably the beginner friendly one um yeah but with that said we're taking the recap here uh ice rider calyrex v max hits hard it's easy to set up everything is two energy everything easy to get going easy to keep going awesome just make sure you set up your v's turn one or as soon as you can because uh late game their liability is they're only 210 hit points but you know if you can get to the v maxes they're not as much of a liability metals nowheres uh, they're strong and consistent with the Inteleon engine. So the Arceus V-Star engine is an existing one. The Babarel engine is an existing one. Um, but I keep finding myself coming back to the Inteleon engine. The Inteleon engine is just so good with this card. Gives you everything you want. Gives you the surge. Gives you the water synergy. Gives you the aqua bullets. So you have a two prizer, a three prizer. Um, I just really, really, really like it with the Inteleon engine. Um, less likely to see your weakness. Anybody sees Asian V in a while, like he's been uh, MIA this format, don't really see it making a comeback. Um, Dialga V Star is on the radar, Corviknight V Max is on the radar. Um, they have to prove themselves before I'm going to consider them a real threat. Um, Metal's just been so underwhelming besides Asian for so long that um, we need to see it to believe it. And with Metal Saucer on its way out the door. Uh, I'm not too worried if you were to say this is going to be my deck going into the rotation, like, let's go. So, yeah, I, metal decks, come on, do your worst. And then, unfortunately, it's a three-prize Pokemon. So, really, this is the only trade-off I had for the card. Like, I could talk for days about how good this card is and how much fun this card is, how accessible this card is. But at the end of the day, it's still a VMAX. It's still a three-prize Pokemon. You can't just blindly throw one up there and soak damage or... Um, you know, blindly play it and run into traffic with it. Like, it's still a three prizer. You still have to be careful because two and you're gone. So, knowing when to use it takes a bit of practice. So, other than that, this card is just, it's just a big body that hits hard. But be careful because it is a three prize Pokemon. And lastly, and this is the one I want to close out on, it will be widely available. So, if you want to try it out, if you want to make this your main, if you're just as excited as I am for the deck, like this is this is the Torterra of Astral Radiance for me. You're going to see a lot of Ice Rider stuff. Uh, it is widely available as of June because it's coming in one of the best products we've ever seen. So it's widely available, easy to get your hands on. It'll drive all their prices down. And if we get really, really lucky maybe we'll get the shady dealings engine in there and that'll just drive that price down but like you can't go wrong with ice rider there's so many ways to play it and it's going to be an oko machine with a not so common weakness but if you stuck around until the end i just wanted to say thank you i appreciate your sport support and until next time take care